right, thank you very much. Um, I was told I had a little bit longer presentation and I'm going to have to cram a long presentation into 15 minutes. So the translators, please forgive me, but I'm going to talk very fast. Uh, Linux has come a long way. It was less than 10 years ago that Linux was in the development model of open source was characterized as a threat to any company that utilized it. This is a quote from uh, 2001 that really tried to tell people to stay away from open source, don't use it. If you do use open source, it will threaten your entire company. Just eight years later, that same company made a contribution to the Linux kernel under the very licensing regime they thought was a threat. And that really indicates just how far open source has come and just about how far Microsoft, to their credit, has come in acknowledging the importance of open source. Today, Linux is used by everyone in the modern world multiple times a day, every single day, and many times they don't even know it. Linux is really the fastest growing platform in every single category of computing. When you do a Google search, you use Linux. When you use an ATM machine, you're probably using Linux. When you record a video on your DVR, you're using Linux. When you uh, use a cell phone, you're probably using Linux and so forth. It really is a prolific operating system that represents a massive $50 billion industry. There are some trends that I want to talk to you about today, three main trends that are affecting Linux, in particular Linux on the desktop, that I thought I would share with you today. The first trend I think you all understand, the uh, downturn in the economy is actually helping open source and helping Linux. Uh, recently, IDC just upgraded their forecast for the growth of open source in Linux because of the recession. Recessions tend to accentuate trends. And as people have hard times economically, they focus on things that are important. And one of the things that are important are cost and efficiency. And really open source provides those things better than anything else in computing. And that is really t letting people and causing people to take a second look at using open source, in particular in client computing. IDC, Forrester, all of the major analyst firms have basically published studies this year confirming that trend. But there's a second trend that's happening that I think all of you understand, but I want to illustrate just how important open source is to this second trend. And that's the idea of convergence. How many people here understand the concept of convergence? Most people? I'll tell you a little bit what it means. So it basically means that phones are starting to look like PCs and PCs are starting to look like phones. It's the idea that functionality across different types of computing tend to converge. And so I'll give you a specific example. Just uh, about eight years ago when that Microsoft first quote was published, uh, I owned uh, this computer, a ThinkPad T20. Pretty good computer, fast processor. Uh, for the day, it had a, a decent sized hard drive. It was about $1,000, the battery wasn't very good, but this is one of the better computers during that time. At the same time, I had a cell phone in the United States. It was a Motorola flip phone. Uh, it really could only make voice calls. Caller ID was a big feature. Uh, it was uh, free with a wireless data plan uh, that was about $69 a month. And the battery on that cell phone, also terrible. So that was about eight years ago. Today we're witnessing a type of convergence uh, in these, these uh, areas that sort of are best exemplified by the iPhone. If you look at the iPhone, it has a processor that's pretty similar to that computer that I had. It's a 600 megahertz processor. It has more storage. It has a better screen, it has more functionality than the computer, than the PC that I was using not that long ago. And so what you're seeing is phones are starting to really take on the characteristics of the PC. Better yet, they're even cheaper. A, 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 an iPhone is really about 300 US dollars, uh, which I think is about uh, one euro, something like that. Um, it's. Uh, it still has a crappy battery. Someone's got to solve the battery issue. And all of that's interesting and all of that is about convergence, but what is more interesting is the PC that I have today. I have an HP Mini 1000. It has a faster processor, big amount of storage, a really nice screen, lots of functionality. And the interesting thing about this, it has VoIP uh, telephony on it. it can, I can use it to make Skype phone calls. The in most interesting thing about this PC is it's cheaper than the cell phone. 
It's cheaper to make this PC than it is to make an iPhone, and it's cheaper to purchase than it is to make an iPhone. So what you're seeing here is these categories, the PC industry and the, the mobile phone industry are coming together. They're converging. And that really is redefining what desktop computing means. And what do we mean when we say desktop? Is this the desktop, the smartphone? Is this the desktop, new netbooks, uh, mobile internet devices, mids? Is the browser really the desktop? According to Google, it's just going to be the browser. Uh, is the TV your new desktop? Is your car your new desktop? Is that how you're going to access information? Well, the point is, we don't know what the new desktop is going to be. With the price of computing this low, with the price of software this low, the ability to take open source and create anything, we don't know what the new desktop is going to be. There's only one thing I do know about the new desktop. It will probably be based on Linux. And the reason it will be based on Linux is not only because Linux is the best software across every one of these forms of computing, but the economics of Linux, the way that the source code is developed, the way that the source code is distributed, and the cost models are perfectly suited for this new converged world. And so what do I mean by that? Well, convergence changes the way the PC industry makes money. This is typically how the old pre-converged PC industry made money. Software operating system vendors, largely Microsoft, would sell their operating system to device makers like HP or Dell or Lenovo or, or whatever. They would then sell those devices to consumers and just add the cost of the operating system to the PC and sell that through to consumers. So that's sort of how the PC industry supply chain in a very rudimentary way functioned. Application and content developers, ISVs, the Adobe's of this world, pretty much got a free ride in these economics. If you wanted to build an application and sell it on the Windows platform or on the Mac platform, you basically got a lot of tools. Usually you got those tools for free, and you were able to freely sell those applications on that platform, either to the operating system vendor, the device maker, or directly to the consumer. And so these are the multi-sided economics of the pre-converged, of the old PC industry. And those are changing very radically. The future of the PC industry, the future of client computing, is going to look a lot more like this, which is very similar to the cell phone industry today. So you have some new players in this industry, and you have new ways to change money in this industry. First thing you'll notice is that there's an entirely new, important player in this industry. Uh, new multi-sided economic model. Network operators are going to be increasingly important in client computing and the distribution of PCs. And the reason is because the PC industry is now taking on the characteristics of the phone industry, where PCs are probably going to be free. A wireless carrier will purchase PCs from device makers, subsidize those, and give them away in exchange for services to consumers. Right. And that's changing fundamentally who the customer is in terms of PC purchasing, and it's changing the way that money flows throughout this economy. More importantly, the application developers that free ride before, the Adobe's, don't get a free ride in this model anymore. Application developers now, if you look at the iPhone App Store as an example, give 30% of their gross revenue to the operating system vendor, in the case of Apple, in exchange for allowing them to offer their applications on the iPhone. Think of it this way. What if Adobe, a multi-hundred million dollar company on a quarterly basis, announced tomorrow they're going to give 30% of their gross revenue to Microsoft just to offer Photoshop on Windows? People would start selling Adobe stock, they'd start buying Microsoft stock, it would be unthinkable to think they would give up that much revenue. But that is really what is happening in the PC industry today. That new change, that change of how applications and software are delivered throughout this ecosystem is really happening. And that's going to happen increasingly. Everyone's going to have an app store. It's a new way to deliver software. And it's a reality that the computing industry on the client side needs to live with. And so let's look at this model and how open source fits into it. If you use the old proprietary model, if you used a closed operating system in this model, basically, if you're a device maker, you're stuck 
in the low margin, high volume business that you've always been in. You don't get to participate in any of these new economics, right? The platform vendor's gonna take 30% of the ISV revenue. They're gonna still sell you their software. You're gonna be locked into them. You're gonna have to sell to network providers that are gonna push your margins down even further, and you're still gonna be held hostage. And I'm using device makers as an example here, but you can apply this same example to any other actor in this economic model. When you have a closed operating system in this model, the economics are perfect for the platform provider and they stink for everybody else. And so what can make that different? Well, open source and Linux makes that different. Because for the device maker who uses Linux to create new devices, a set-top box, a television set, a smartphone, a netbook, a mobile internet device, they get to participate in all kinds of new economics. They can build their own app store. They can create their own Linux-based operating system. They no longer have to pay royalties to a device maker. They can now create a branded custom experience to new markets and really change the game. And that is why Linux is going to succeed in the new client PC marketplace. It's an important change. The final trend I want to tell you about today with the small amount of time I have is that free as in beer really matters. The software and hardware industry is changing because all of you know that software is free. It's the services, it's the support that you pay for. Well, what I'd like to tell you today is that soft, in addition to software being free, software will be free, hardware is going to be free. Nobody is going to buy software or hardware. And what do I mean by that? Well, in the client side, here's a perfect example in London, where when you buy a, a, a wireless data plan from T-Mobile, you get a free laptop. I predict in 12 to 18 months, laptop computers will basically be free. And this same thing is happening on the enterprise side. In Silicon Valley, where I live, if you're a hot web startup, you don't buy any software. You use open source, you know, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP to create a web business. And you don't buy any hardware either. You host it on Amazon's cloud, and if your business succeeds, you scale up your virtual machines, and if it doesn't, you have less. But you basically don't buy any hardware or any software at all. And that is the trend. Why is that happening? Because we are moving to a services economy in IT. The people making money are Google, Nokia with their OV music service, app stores, Netflix on demand, hosted software like Salesforce.com, and that is hugely advantageous to open source and Linux. The way you can understand this is by asking yourself one simple question. Could Google be the company they are today if Google was built on .NET and Windows? The answer is no. There's no way that they could be. I see someone from Microsoft waving their hand up. <laughs> yes, they could. No, they couldn't. They couldn't have optimized it effectively. They couldn't have scaled the business effectively. Salesforce.com would not have the kind of margins that they have without running their entire platform on open source software. That's a services trend that's permanent, and that is a huge advantage to open source. That is why open source is only at the beginning of the demand curve that is going to go up exponentially in the next five to 10 years. So there's a series of challenges with this, and unfortunately I don't have enough time to go over those challenges, but we need to prevent this by using standards. If you want to ask me about standards later. So we need to be unified in our platform so it's not fragmented. We have projects like the Linux standard base to do that. We need to have a unified legal defense Organizations like the Open Invention Network, the Software Freedom Law Center, my organization, Defensive Publications, the Open Source OSI, all of these are a sophisticated group of collective legal defense mechanisms that make sure that this platform, that Linux and open source will remain free. It's the most sophisticated collective legal defense that has ever been uh, invoked in the history of computing. And I encourage you to find out more about these organizations and how well they benefit the community. The final challenge that we need to do to make the Linux client great and to make sure that open source succeeds in the, uh, the client side of computing is fit and finish. And the best example I could come up with here was Apple. 
we need to get that last 10% of really good fit and finish to make Linux and open source take off. That is happening today. It's happening in the Moblin project, it's happening in Android, it's happening on the Palm Pre, it's happening on a huge range of projects. Go check these out, this will be solved, it's a huge opportunity. So join with the Linux community, I'll stop there and let the panel come up. I hope I got uh, uh, everything done in time. If you have any questions, I'll be available afterwards. So thank you very much.